Hello, everybody, and welcome to this course, uh, Internet of Things from University of Oulu. It's a master's level course uh, where we go through uh, different definitions, enables, and the ways to implement Internet of Things systems, applications, architectures, and other stuff. My name is Ella Peltonen. I'm a researcher here at the University of Oulu, giving this course and the lectures. So, in this very first lecture, we are discussing about what is the Internet of Things. What are the definitions and what are the enables to allow us to build these sorts of applications? So Internet of Things is a huge hype nowadays. It's becoming a big thing, meaning that uh, our existing networking uh, systems and also computational systems need to be reacting what's uh, new and happening in this area. To uh, give some short definitions, uh, the smart home is like a perfect example of uh, this sort of new communications. It doesn't necessarily need to be a home. It can be any sort of uh, smart hospital, smart, smart industry, manufacturing. So this is not only one uh, about the smart home or the smart location in general, but this is the one very good example. So in Internet of Things, we are bringing these smart systems in our everyday life. We are bringing different sensors to measure our activities. Or for example, in the case of the smart home, we are bringing the sensors to measure what's happening in the home. What's the energy consumption level measuring electricity? We can measure lighting. Uh, we can measure different activities the humans do in the building or the building itself, like how much snow there is in the roof of the building, uh, what sort of uh, or potential uh, air quality issues there are in the environments we are living and such other things. And in general, this Internet of Things describes all sort of uh, potentials and applications that are beyond uh, the traditional uh, system where we have a server and, and probably a PC or server in um, internet like like a web services or traditional sending email and, and other stuff so uh, the smartification or, or smartification terminology here um, means the bringing the computational capacity and do something making something smart by bringing the networking capabilities and computational capabilities into the those uh, uh, very everyday items whether they are bridges and kitchenware, smart TV, PlayStation. <laughs> so there are a lot of everyday objects. And even as normal smartphones can be part of this, if they are uh, part of some sort of um, um, smarter environment, applications collecting data, and giving us recommendations and other stuff based on, on, on those data collection results. Uh, the key thing in Internet of Things is the participation. So no one single device, which is not communicating. Even if it has uh, computational resources, it, it doesn't have the internet part of it. So it's always part of internet and the things. So we have the things, which are the sensors, uh, collecting the data from the environment, analyzing the environment. And we do have actuators that are giving back the feedback uh, making the change in the environment. Very classical example, air conditional, a smart air conditioning system where uh, in real time, the air quality is measured by sensors in a room and the actuators are actually changing the uh, air quality control uh, management based on, on, on the readings on, on the data. So we do need different parts here. We need the actual sensors in a very low level. You will see in the uh, system there are uh, different embedded sensors in, in, in uh, smart homes or, or smart traffic, urban computing. We have uh, devices which are carry-on, like smartphones, different uh, smart uh, wearables. And we have application-specific devices such as uh, connected vehicles or smart cars. Doesn't only mean self driving cars, it can also be any type of connecting car, maybe human driving, but, but they can get some external information, for example, from the other uh, cars or the other environments in, 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 in the urban environment. And we do have a human in the loop. So, human as a user is a very important part of the any IoT system, and sensing a human is one of the key things 
here. Then we need, <coughs> for computational capacity, we need different sort of uh, uh, networking capabilities. We need uh, sensor data analytics capabilities, AI capabilities, machine learning capabilities. And for that, we do have a cloud services in traditional way. And in the future, even more coming are the different edge services and edge and network supported uh, computational capabilities. So how to connect these devices uh, to the computational capabilities to each other and, 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 and to the cloud systems or edge systems, we need a connectivity which is specified for the case, whether it's a very data intensive communication where a lot of data is coming from the sensors to the analytic system, or we need very uh, fast communication fast because we don't want something to happen in real time. We are not just collecting data to the cloud. We are also giving the feedback. We are giving recommendations through the actuators. We are changing the environment through the actuators. It can be automatic. It can be given to a human or uh, to the system itself, whether it's robotics or, or something similar. So the uh, enables. So which things make the IoT systems to happen? As I mentioned, the IoT is not only the things, so all those fancy smart devices, fancy uh, sensors, it's also about the communication. So the internet part here is equally important. You are sensing and sensors and, and sensors in new ways in different embedded systems. We need a wireless connectivity because part of these devices are mobile. Uh, doesn't only need smartphones or mobile phones. It also means anything we carry on whether they are personal sensors like uh, sport trackers, smart rings, earables, um, they can be automatic vehicles and, and connected vehicles in general, they are moving all the time. So, so we need, a robotics can be moving in the factory. So we need a mobility and, and, and there the wireless communication is, is the key. Then of course, because we want to have things happening on real time, we need a low latency networks, meaning the communication is faster, more lightweight. Whenever we have a battery dependent systems, we want that the energy savings are taken into account. So there are really different trade-offs, different perspectives, uh, what is needed for, for <coughs> its computing, uh, this uh, IoT systems. Edge and for computing here, meaning that instead of sending everything to the cloud, which can be quite far away, we are actually performing also local computing in the edge of the network, in the local devices, which can be inside your, for example, your smart home. They can be local servers, or they can be dedicated edge uh, servers in the network infrastructure. So we need to think about a little bit different way where we perform the computation, where, when we perform the computation and, and how it, it's going to happen in, 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 in as a whole big picture. And of course, if we want to actually have a difference in the environment, we want to have automatic control on the environment, we need this automated system, control management, recommendation systems. Uh, if there is a human in the loop who wants to give something for the human to read or see, Visualizations become here when you have a human in the loop, human to understand the data. And of course, to generate this smart thing. So nothing is smart only because it's communicating with the internet. It's smart when we are making some artificial intelligence, machine learning or data analytics, to actually learn something from the environment. And that's where we can really get the smart devices, is when they are connected, when there are some learning happening, and when they are actually giving feedback or generating information that have, can have a control or, or, or capability to change the environment. <clears throat> Going through some of these uh, enables. So first of all, uh, sensors. There are a lot of different sensors from very, uh, let's say full computers, like smartphones are pretty much full, full computers in the capabilities to uh, some of the lower or dumper uh, devices, uh, dump only in, 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 um, uh, in terms that they don't have that much uh, capabilities on their own. So maybe they don't have a computational capability, but they can send data out very quickly. They can uh, actually have an effect on, on, on the environment. And uh, 
some sensors are okay-ish to have alone. So if you have a step counter on a smartphone, it's enough to have the only one sensor. And, but some, some cases we need a network of sensors. And good example here, uh, for example, the air quality monitoring in a building, we need multiple sensors collecting the data in the different points of their locate, different points of their building, different rooms in the building. Uh, because if you make an adjustment in the air conditioning based on the room that's empty, it doesn't help the room that's full of people. And of course, different quality control uh, sensors can get broken. Sensors can get misleading data, misinformation. So the quality control here means that we can actually uh, correct also other sensors based on the network of sensors working together. So, so this is a very large topic. We can have sensors working together. We can have individual sensors. We can have different types of sensors sensing different things, but the information is combined through the sensor fusion methodology to get something useful out of it. That's the sensor fusion. <clears throat> so whenever we collect the data from whether the multiple similar sensors or a variety of set of different sensors, and we combine that information, we call it sensor fusion. And that gives us information which is not capable of getting only out of one sensor, but we need a network of sensors or a variety of different sensors to have the information. Many reasons why we need this. Uh, maybe we want to learn something which is not presented in one single data point, but we need a, a coherence of multiple sensors working together and getting the new information based on multiple different sensors. Or we want to validate or configure the other sensors based on the majority of sensor readings. So there are a lot of different um, uh, use cases for, for also for the sensor fusion. First thing to remember, technological systems can, fa uh, can fail. There can be errors. There can be misconfigurations caused by human. Uh, there can be misconfiguration caused by the environment changing too fast or something. The sensor can react. So, so technological solutions, there's always the risk that there are failures or other, other possible break up, break down points. So we need to uh, kind of react on these, especially when we have automated systems, we need to trust the system. It's working reliable, it's um, coherent, and it's, it's working in any case, in any environment as it's supposed to be working. The mention the communication, which is the key, it's the internet. Underline the name internet, uh, the word internet in the name of the internet, internet of things. And because these are automated systems, um, there is no human being saying that please send this now immediately and send me feedback. Uh, but there are, are systems that are controlling each other. There are systems that are communicating with each other, collaborating with each other. It also means that we need to think about it a little bit differently how these devices communicate. So we need this, uh, what we call a messaging machine communication without the human intervention. The traditional networking, the general use case is that you are, are browsing a web server, you are clicking some URL and you are getting that website, but that's a human cost uh, action. <laughs> that's a human behind the request to get that website or send an email. But this kind of system doesn't work when we want to have something automatic, automatic control, and in general, things working uh, without the human intervention. That's where we need machine to machine communications. We will have a later uh, separate lecture about these issues, each of them. So uh, web of things, another term uh, we are going to use in this course, don't mix with um, uh, machine to machine communication. Web of Things is basically an uh, architectural solution to have things happen as they would be a web service system. That's the help the developer, the developer to create these services. But I want to mention the terminology here because it's, it's quite important and we will have a dedicated lecture about uh, Web of Things also in, in this series. Uh, communication is not only about uh, sharing information through some communication channel. It can also be uh, uh, having information recorded on, on different tags. Uh, RFID, NFC, most popular use cases are different smart cards, credit cards, uh, uh, 
different decks um, to uh, uh, smart tickets, for example, uh, things like that. And uh, to have this very uh, specialized communication uh, infrastructure or solutions and systems to work, we need a different type of protocols also. So, so traditional TCP IP protocols are there. So the internet is internet, so it's not going anywhere. We do have a TCP IP in the future. <clears throat> but in addition, we need this local communication capabilities, Bluetooth, uh, low latency networks, uh, lightweight communications, energy saving communications, especially in a local environment where we have the uh, IoT solution in place. And we will discuss more about especially wireless communications in, in this course. And the special thing here for computation and communication is that, the, so the, first of all, uh, the difference between communication, it's sharing the information, but the computation is needed for any sort of machine learning, any sort of data analytics, any sort of processing of the data. So we need a computational capacity whether in the devices themselves or somewhere it's a reachable true communication. And most of the IoT uh, systems, IoT sensors and devices, they are quite small. Small, not in terms of physical size, but some small in terms of what sort of capabilities they have. They usually are, they have very good communication capabilities, but they don't have that good computational capabilities. It means that the data which is collected from those sensors need to be sent somewhere else to be actually processed and then sent back to the actuators. And there are different types of devices. For example, in smartphone, you can do comp communi computation also because they are in many ways quite big computers. Of course, they are battery dependent. It means that whatever you do, more computational tasks, the more CPU, GPU there is to be used, the memory to be used, means also that your battery is running out faster. So the energy savings are one reason to make the computational tasks happen somewhere else. Traditional way to perform this offloading, uh, what's the terminology we use when we are sending something to be computed somewhere else, is to use the cloud services. <coughs> Mainly because nowadays they are very easy to take in the usage. The developer only basically needs a bank, uh, bank credit card to pay for the services and, and then you're free to go. So you don't need to have own dedicated hardware or running on your own or, or your own dedicated servers. You can get the computational capacity quite easily. Um, but in the future uh, and also in this modern upcoming 5G, 6G um, networks, we will have more and more edge capabilities to run things closer to the user, closer to the actual sensor than in the cloud. Of course, cloud will be there. Um, if you have a huge amount of data, it's only reasonable to have it somewhere where you have a huge storage and huge computational capability, and, and technically that's the cloud. So I mentioned the edge. <coughs> so there is a little bit now uh, definition issue. What's the edge? It's the edge of the network. It's basically everything else than the traditional clouds and server infrastructure. Um, but there is some discussion which are the actual definition. Sometimes you see the FOC and edge used in a different ways. So, so whether those are the network infrastructure here in the middle, it can be mentioned, this is the edge, okay. Or it can be, this is the FOC, okay. Um, and then we have the user devices which are handheld devices very close in the same room than you are currently. That, that's a kind of the farthest edge of the devices. And, and when I say far, uh, you can mean, <laughs> that's the other perspective issue. Some people say far is in the cloud because it's far from you. Some people say far is the user devices because they are far from traditional computing environment, which is the cloud. So, so this is also a little bit misleading. So be very careful when we are using this terminology. But <coughs> anyway, it's clear the cloud is cloud. And, and then we have a network infrastructure uh, that can have dedicated uh, IoT uh, or edge uh, capabilities and servers. And then we have the user devices and, and those 
touchable, touchable devices in, in, in your room or in your building that can be considered with a, the MIST, also there's the term MIST, or, or edge, edge devices. So quite highly important anyway to understand that these are different levels of these architectures in, in, in the IoT. <coughs> and whenever we have a sensing solutions, these are pretty much um, data driven because when we want to learn something uh, from the environment, we need to have senses to understand the environment. And here the sensors are working as an automatic senses, senses for the machine to understand what's happening in the environment, whether it's air quality, whether it's a motion sensor, whether it's a video accelerometer, microphone for getting the audio, uh, it can be anything. So there are a lot of different sensors. But anyway, the sensor data is just um, just the raw data. So we, it needs to be pre-processed. Um, it needs to be cleaned, checked for any misreading, any missing information, any possible mistakes in the data, and usually pre-processed in a form that it can be given as an input for a machine learning algorithm or AI algorithm. So all these things, I mean, like a pre-processing, cleaning the data, running the actual learning algorithms, whether they are considered machine learning, artificial intelligence recommendation systems, same thing, data analytics, it's all data analytics. <coughs> then we need the computational capabilities which give a feedback back to the uh, actual system, back to the environment. And that's what uh, means that we have the data-driven approach. A little bit more uh, visual presentation of the same thing. So uh, this kind of like a look. In far corner here or here, we have <coughs> sensing and data collection between the blue and the green arrow. Uh, then we go to have uh, data management, storing the data, processing, cleaning the data. And when we have a data in a representation format, we can use for as an input for machine learning algorithms or data analytics algorithms. We do the learning and we learn something from that learning which is in most cases, it's a list of probabilities. So we want to also understand what these probabilities mean in the given use case <coughs> and, and, and formulate the information, formulate the cognition. Then we give a feedback to the system, whatever it's in, uh, it can be like a rule to perform some operation based on the learning results. It can be a recommendation for a human that you should do this task now. It can be notification, it can even be alarm if there is something alarming recognized from the data. And then we continue sensing. So this is a look. And everything we do based on the given recommendation, they do have an effect back to the sensing data, of course, because we are changing the environment based on what we have learned from the system. So this is a loop. And then it continues. We collect new data. We, again, we clean it, process it, analyze it, give new recommendations back to the system or automatic control back to the system. And, and then it goes on. This also means that this system doesn't really sleep at any time. So also when you are considering management, updating the systems, um, making um, changes in the system, you need to consider that this system doesn't really sleep. So there need to be within management phases, management control systems for the system itself. Okay. That was the first lecture <coughs> where we discussed about what it, IoT means, what sort of things are part of the IoT, what we need for IoT, underlining the fact that then it's an internet, so we have a communication of things where we have a sensors, actuators to understand the environment. And in addition to that, we have the intelligence, which is artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analytics, something. Uh, to bring the ultimate decision making into in the, the picture. Thanks for listening. In the next lecture, we will discuss more about the sensing and applications for the IoT.